Hey guys, Philosopher here, and today I have my day six update uh, for DD5. I've actually had some of you commenting, where's the new video, where's the new video? And I am actually still in uh, the same spot that I was in yesterday. So you may ask, well, wait, why is that, why are you uh, not moving? And the simple answer is that I have a couple gear pieces that I need. It's small enough that I probably could just core the store some more, you know, the supply store and get it, get the, the, the pieces that I need. But it's just, I don't see the point of doing that. <clears throat> I'm, I'm far ahead of the next person. Uh, if I end up, uh, why do that when I could just get the pieces for free later tonight uh, or tomorrow or whatever? Um, if they introduce some teal offers or something that gives um, folks... A, a lot of teal gear then so be it uh then i will then i'll rush and uh it is what it is but i'd like to do this at a time when i can um uh wh when i can just not pay extra i mean why do that why spend extra cores uh needlessly it could end up being a lot of cores you never know just based on rng and uh, I'm 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 okay with the position that I'm in here. It is what it is. Uh, so um, that's sort of what I've decided to do. Um, and I also recognize that sometimes there can be changes that will give me an opportunity to bring in better characters, additional characters as well. So I'm taking that into account. In other words, for legendary, I have not applied any pieces other than that initial mishap with Adam Warlock. <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, there are options here for me, okay? There are options in terms of what I do for tech, tech gear, whether it's Shuri or Doc Ock or both. Same thing with, with Mutant, whether I bring in Omega Red, Phoenix, or both. Um, uh, Jubilee, some of you asked me, why have I not considered Jubilee? It's just that the costs of her pieces are much higher. So, Really, what I look at for all of these characters is the amount of pieces that they require. That's really, you know, what what is driving a lot of this decision. So when I look at, for example, you know, the legendary characters, okay, <clears throat> and this is msf.gg. I'm going to show you when this is done. I'm going to do a video that compares the different choices and talks to you about if you're racing, who are the choices you should consider for the different DD5 sections. If you are, you know, if you're not racing, if you are, um, you know, if you're just trying to build your roster in a, in a, in a positive way, you know, where you would do it. Um, and, uh, you know, what, what characters you would take. And so, for example, when you look at Jubilee and we look at the gear, you know, she requires 72 uniques, 400 of these, and then, you know, 288, 240, 192. <clears throat> Whereas if you compare her to Omega Red, for example, 228, so that saves you 60. She, it saves you, saves you uniques, <clears throat> half as many of these. So you can see the differences, right? Now, if you're doing this right, I've said before in these videos that racing is a gear management exercise more than it is a speed exercise. And one thing I've said to all of you is that um, the, the the actual DD5 notes are pretty easy. They're easier than DD4 was at this point. They're easier than DD3 was at this point. It's really not about choosing characters that get you through the node slightly faster. I mean, you need, you definitely don't, you know, if if you choose like the worst characters, if you're trying to get through with Shield Trooper and aim monstrosity, uh, like somebody had done for DD4 initially, that that can be painful. But if you're just using reasonable characters, you're gonna get through. The issue is making sure you have enough gear. So I, you know, you guys may at the end be like, well, why is he choosing this character for legendary, not that one? And it's purely going to be a gear choice. Now, you also have to make decisions for yourself. I mean, I think for those of you who are now starting to think about TD5, uh, you have to think you know, you're getting so few, so little teal gear. You, you Do you want to apply teal gear to a character that could get you through Dormammu to get Dormammu? 
but is not as good of a character. Uh, and, um, you know, I think that's going to be the tough choice that a lot of, uh, of, a lot of folks are going to have to make for their rosters. And I think <clears throat> what I'm going to try to do once this is done is present the choice for all of you as here's the path you could take if you want to get to Dormammu quickly while choosing some reasonable characters. Okay. We're not going to, not going to have you guys gearing up shield trooper and Dr. Strange or something, but reasonable characters that you can use elsewhere. Uh, versus characters that, um, characters that uh, you know are going to give you the most value elsewhere. So, for example, you know the the city section is a great example of like you could probably get through without cloak and dagger, and if you skip them, you know you can then gear the Eternals. But they're very valuable in raid, right? So, you know, to me, this was potentially worth doing. But you certainly could skip the symbiotes. And really, and there may be some new choices that come out there. We don't know. In addition, we've got the global choices here. I brought in the Secret, of, the secret Avengers. And then I brought in, um, uh, you know, two of the Weapon X characters. But, you know... If you're if you are somebody who, for example, is like, look, I really rely on Doctor Doom in two sections of the Doom Raid, it may make sense to gear him. the The issue is Miasma, so you gearing up him and Cloak uh, is very. It can be very hard to get to get that number of Miasma. For me, getting uh, you know you have uh, there's other other characters as well. Deathpool, Adam Warlock, Miasma is a very high uh, impact item, and then when you get to Cosmic. Um, you know, there's a, th this is a, 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 an area where there are a lot of amazing choices. And it's really going to depend on where you use your gear elsewhere, balancing out your gear. I think using mutant gear more and more in the legendary section can make a lot of sense. Because I had geared down a Morlock, who in legendary, uh, which used a lot of mystic gear, I didn't have it here for, let's say, Deathpool or for Circe and Icarus. Uh, if I had not get misclicked there, I might have been able to do that and then push this gear more into the legendary section and brought, you know, even more mutant uh, gear legendaries, uh, you know, because there are <laughs> a whole number of them. There are four. So you definitely can go heavily on mutant in the legendary section. So I think, you know, that those are the sort of considerations that folks are going to have. But I think for most of you, this is really not even an immediate choice. And it's because teal gear is so rare. And one thing that I'm going to talk about after this is the choice that I'm going to make. I mean, I'm going to scale back heavily on teal gear after this. Um, and we're going to talk about that. And, you know, what what direction Scopely is taking this game? It's not, I don't think, a positive direction. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that. And uh, what I see them doing, and you guys can decide for yourself how you want to react to that. All right, guys. Hope you like this update. More updates to follow uh, after the holiday. I'm gonna, I've, I know I've got a lot of videos to catch up on, top 10 list uh, and uh, tier lists and everything else. Uh, but in any event, um, have a happy Thanksgiving if you're in the United States. And uh, if you like this video, smash that like button. Subscribe to this channel. If you have comments, questions, cheers, jeers, you can leave them below or go to my Discord. That is linked below as well. You can also go to my Twitch stream. That is linked below too.